Is Fall Guys still fun? The short answer, sometimes. Hi, I'm Wayside and over the past few weeks I've been playing hours and hours of Fall Guys so you don't have to, but do you want to? I'm gonna break this down into several parts listed on screen and have a summary at the end. For TLDW, jump to this timestamp. As always, if you like the video, drop a sub and a like. If you hate it, comment and tell me how bored you are. Part 1. The Good. Replayability. Mediatonic has put a lot of effort since launch to create levels that are polished, simple, but still require a certain amount of skill to complete. Almost every race map has the potential to knock you out if you are not careful, but also lets you solo carry your team. Most knockout maps have several challenges to keep you paying attention and allows for great risk and subsequent reward. These styles are not without stinker maps, but overall, many of these are replayable, and if you don't like the map, you can just leave without penalty. Due to the different levels of skill within the player base, it's easy to play the same map multiple times over and still experience something new, leading to my next point. Random moments. After over a hundred hours, I'm still surprised by certain interactions. Hope that guy gets out. Oh! Oh! Is that the win? <laughs> Be it a teammate randomly jumping to their doom, a glitch that looks extra wonky, or an unexpected knockout, it still has the potential to shock you, entertain you, whatever you want. Creative level design. Certainly a necessary part to any free-to-play game is the customization options, not only with skins in this case, but also making your own custom levels. Mediatonic has done an excellent job with adding the stage creator and making continual updates to it to make it easier to build levels. They have also added an explore map where you go through random levels instead of selecting the most popular ones. This allows for more good and bad to be put out there, and the player is rewarded with easy shards to test these levels. Especially polished ones that are created by users are put into the main knockout rotation from time to time. Personally, I think the creative levels are actually pretty good. I've spent a fair bit of time trying them out, and while there are quite a few of them that are either long or tedious, there are several gems amongst them that have really creative ideas or are really challenging but yet still doable. If you have not given it a shot yet, I would absolutely recommend trying some of the creative levels at least just to see what it's like. Part 2. The Bad Filler Despite always having things to do in levels, the timing between some of the necessary actions can be extremely boring. In some fruit, for example, once you see what is around, you are just waiting for the platforms to spawn and the timer to tick down, lasting up to half the time you are playing that level. In the track race one, you are running until failure. If you get out early or stay in the whole time, you are either watching or running lap after lap without much challenge or interaction. This can be minutes of downtime just to see if your partner succeeds in carrying you both, or if you're both out completely. I don't have a fix for these issues, but rather, I'm pointing out potential downsides of spending so much time playing this game. Lack of polished levels. Mediatonic has done a great job creating levels, but only have a limited selection at any given time, while they lock others behind events or just keep them out of rotations. They have supplemented this with the creator levels, but many are not in a state to keep them in the rotation consistently. As the stage creator gets better over time, this may become less of an issue, but it certainly takes away from the experience currently. I would imagine they keep the rotation still in place to keep the game quote fresh, but with so many levels, I feel if you have more and more rotating, it's more fun to see a random level every now and then, rather than waiting for it to come off of the rotation. Progression. In its current state, you need almost a thousand crowns to complete the progression tree in Fall Guys. At a rate of about two crowns per hour for the average player, it would still take 500 plus hours of gameplay to complete. On top of that, there have been no progression levels added over the past several years, so once you put in the time, you will likely not see the point in returning the game. This keeps a constant supply of new players needed, or something for old players to keep coming back to. Part 3. The Guys Friends really do make this game. When you can jump on a voice chat and interact with a player, better or worse than you, it shows a totally different side of the game. You can pass the controller off and make fun of how bad your friend is, or get carried to victory by that friend who's way too good at the game. That's my biggest suggestion with this free to play game. When you pick it up, grab a friend to play with you. If you don't have anyone to play, join a small streamer. They almost are always happy to let anyone join and can show you the ropes as well as chat with you. Who knows, maybe you'll even find a new up and coming streamer in the process. And here we are. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you sticking around. Going back to the question, is Fall Guys fun? If you can get over some of the filler and limited levels to see some of the replayability with friends, it absolutely is fun and worth picking up. Is it a 100 plus hour game? Probably not for most people. But I would suggest grabbing a few friends, giving it a shot, and seeing where you go. So what do you think? 
Are there any points that I missed? Do you agree or disagree with my verdict? Let me know, and thanks for watching. Bye! Through the sun